This is the house in Ladner, British Columbia, where I grew up. This is my father, Ken Atke, whose pancakes are a Sunday tradition. And my sister, Marilyn. I also have another sister, Bev, and in common with most people, a mother. Her name is Marion. The matriarch of the family was my late grandmother, Fern Atke, who bought the house for $600 in 1936. When newcomers came, if they didn't live nearby, there wasn't enough to have a school, you couldn't have a church, there was no place to meet, you had no companionship, and all the old timers as they came took land close to one another to make a community. With deep roots in the community, I grew up with a strong sense of time and place. This has affected me as both an author of books and a composer for the musical theater. It made me who I am. The Ladner that my parents grew up in was a small fishing and farming community. As they say, there must have been something in the water, for Georgia Street, where I grew up, turned out to be quite a creative environment. Tim Bowling, who lived down the street, is now a nationally acclaimed novelist and poet, and my sister Marilyn is an accomplished painter. Yeah. Although my father was born in nearby Cloverdale, our family has been in Ladner for a century. This gave me a sense of history, but I had my own ideas about history. My father has created a model of old Ladner for the local museum. What ship is the stern wheeler? It's William H. Ladner. Written on the back one. Huh? What's the other one? The third swell. It was built in Ladner. Huh? Because the church hall that was built onto the United Church was only done somewhere in the mid 30s. Yeah. So. I'm assuming they must have used the old Methodist Hall until they sold it to you. I have no memory of it being used that way at all. 
Yeah, and yeah. also they used the, the old Methodist church as their Sunday school. Yeah, they did. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, that, they did for a little while. But the Ladner that I knew was becoming a suburb of Vancouver. I entered the world on the 16th of June, 1958, and arrived at the house in Ladner a few days later. My mother insisted that my sisters and I all take piano lessons. Very good. <laughs> Don't let that halo fool you. Don't let the piano fool you, either. I never did become a good pianist, although the music ended up being my career. Some of my fondest memories were of camping trips to Cultus Lake, an experience I would recall later in my musical Perfect Timing. You probably don't even know how to pitch a tent. Do I know how to pitch a tent? I went to Girl Guides, you know. It's, it's easy. You, you take this pole here, and uh, you connect it to this pole here, and then the spikes... No, you have it all backwards. You have to raise the pole first and then spike them. Oh, well, of course. Everybody knows that. All I can say is you better like pork and beans. What would camping be without pork and beans? It would be like apple pie without ketchup or... Like lasagna without honey. It would be I'm like... glad you've got the outdoor spirit. I can't wait to try mountaineering. We are now gathering around the campfire to have the family sing song. Once an Austrian came yodeling from the mountain so high Till the cuckoo came calling just to answer his cry. Tra -la -la -tra -la -la. An uncle gave me a toy tiger, which in my father's hands became Brady Cat, who was scared of his own shadow. Brady Cat's nemesis was Mimi Cat, a tiger with a mouth the size of a walk in closet. The story of Freddy Cat and his encounter with the Moon Monster captivated my sisters and I, and would later form the basis for my first musical, Shikara. Nothing can stop him now as he paces and catches their faces and dies! There was a reason for all this train imagery. My father's father was a train enthusiast. So here comes that other big train shadows. This is the one I remember. That thing's really moving. And so are you. 
As a child, my father had a Buddy L train set. Must have been in the winter time. Cold weather anyhow, with a leather coat on. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> 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 Two cats inside that. <laughs> when I was four years old, my father began building a model railway that would eventually fill an entire attic. This became a center for my imagination. Now well, let's get aboard. Okay. Here's our seat here. Yeah. You want to sit next to the window? Okay. Okie dokie. Here, you, you sit down in there and then I'll sit in next, eh? Okay. <coughs> Look at the river down below. See, yeah, that's what they call the Capilina River there. Here we go. By oh, golly, no. here we're going over the Capilano Bridge. The mm -hmm. God, we're going in a tunnel. Look at, oh, it's getting black in here. Yeah, I, I wish they had lights in the tunnel, don't you? Yeah, it would be nice, wouldn't it? <coughs> yes. Yeah. Sure, by golly. I wonder why they don't cut out the mountain instead of just making a tunnel. I don't know. <coughs> hey, look at that freight go by, eh? Yeah. Boy, that was sure traveling, wasn't it? We were already in the other. Let's go up to the diner this time, eh, Mel? Okay. Up, hey, here is Elsa Lake coming up. Let's look it up, sir. If he says I we're made her in on time, by golly, I'm going to think that he did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be charged. <laughs> Say, this isn't Alta Lake. What is it? No, this is Pemberton. Yeah, Alta Lake's the next station. It's a good thing because we just haven't finished our dinner yet. Hey, would you pass the pickles, please? Here. Yeah, we, better, we gotta get out now. Not again! <laughs> Oh, you guys never say anything else. Thanks to my father, I became an inveterate daydreamer. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, one. Listen, Mel, will you describe the journey we will be taking? I sure will. We will be traveling from Earth to Uranus, a distance of approximately one billion... It's no use trying to contact Jupiter 2.
high school, I was a social misfit of epic proportions. School dances were a particular dread of mine. I was saved only by my parents' decision to build a swimming pool in the backyard. That looks like Shannon. Yeah, that's Shannon Parker. Swimming. He could swim. My sister Bev had dreams of becoming an actress, and she managed to get the lead in the school's production of Bye Bye Birdie. This was my introduction to the world of Broadway musicals. Though Bev quickly outgrew her ambition, my course was set. Today, Ladner is often used as a filming location by Hollywood. But back then, I had my own ideas about making movies. This is Fred Fellini, he's the director of the film. Oh, yeah. uh, yes, what what right. is it you were trying to... Uh... What we were trying to portray was uh, the true feeling, as, as least as we saw it, of uh, the way it was. And did you think that? How was it? Well, it was. It was good. It was, it was good. I, I don't what, see... I'd... What type of dramatic feeling are you trying to... Uh, whatever shows, you know, it's... Whatever comes up, eh? Using my parents' 8mm movie camera, I managed to get the permission of the local United Church minister to use his church as a filming location. After all, he was about to leave anyway. What's the name of the minister that's replacing you now? Uh, Reverend Jack Perry. Oh. And uh, they don't know yet who's going to come after him? No, no. They'll have to make more arrangements this time next year. Okay. Well, good luck to your new church. Thank you very much, Mel. Well, Thank good you luck. Very much. What on earth are you doing? Oh, you're walking now. Oh, I'm doing that super filming there. Zooming down on our cassette. That's where we, what we take everywhere so people can hear us. Stop! Stop! So known as the Canadian Church of Christ, with the Reverend J.A.E. Chester as moderator. This minister was one of the three involved in the proposed union of churches. The other two ministers were Pastor Boris Isaac of the Holy Russian Congregation and Reverend Marion W. Jefferson of the American Church of the Holy Saint. Do you really believe you can make them accept your beliefs? Well, I think uh, once introduced to them, they can't help but accept them. Just like when you were little and were first introduced to the law that 2 plus 2 equals 4, you accepted it once it was explained to you. They just haven't had it explained, but what, they'll accept it, provided their minds are open. One big happy family, that's what it could be. One big happy beautiful world it could be. I, I understand too, there's been some uh, criticism of the technical quality of this film, eh? <laughs> uh, particularly the low budget. Yeah. It's not true at all. It's not? No. What, what was the budget? It's about $15.92. $15.92. In the end, I didn't this become a film director. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Although I worked briefly in the media in Vancouver in 1983, I finally left Ladner for good, moving first to Toronto and ultimately to London, where I've been for the past two decades. I've been with Metro Magazine and its predecessor, Tabloid 59, for just over a year now, and that has been a year of tremendous growth for me. I came to Cable 10 looking for an opportunity to gain experience in television, and I got that. I began doing on-location reports, then started reviewing movies and plays, and finally I recently did my very first live interview. However, everybody reaches a point in their careers when they realize that it is time to leave. I have reached that point. Well, Vancouver is a city with tremendous potential in the arts, 
I have found that I have to expand my boundaries and seek other experiences in order that I might grow as an artist. My destination is Toronto, where I hope to sue my other career as a writer and composer of musicals. In 1990, I spent my last Christmas in the house in Lavender. Since then, we have been together on Christmas in a virtual way, thanks to the wonders of the internet. Is that a book? Is yeah. the other one a book or a CD? I finally made my New York off-Broadway debut as a composer and lyricist in 2001. With the right kind of place, with the right kind of wife, he might have had a chance at the right kind of life. With a woman who was shy and free of any whim, who never gives a care for anyone but him, you can't know the kind of wife he needs till you know.
on last night. You put what? Hey. In a way I can forget you Erase your memory from my mind Turn my back and then forsake you And walk on forever Is there a place where I will meet you? A resting ground or hall of dreams? Where can I call you when I need you? Will you hear my frightened scream? You've been my teacher You've been my gateway to the world Where do I go now? I'm without you I haven't walked the earth enough to know This I am going to dedicate to the children Good night, children. Good night, children. Good night, children. You're going to bed now. Well, what we have tried to do is portray the true meaning, eh? Much less to me. And it was, it was not, it was not to our education. I don't know.